borrowing from Luke. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew. That's ridiculous, because Matthew, as you know, was a tax collector. And actually, it seems like he was employed by the Roman government in Palestine. So in other words, this was a guy who didn't just work for the enemy. He worked for the enemy and then built his own family and friends out of money and sent it on to Caesar. Let me tell you, you may have hated Romans, but you hated hip hypocritical Jews even more, especially when they worked for the Romans and they stole your money. So why Jesus chose this guy as a, as a disciple, I'll never know. At least, at least you don't know until a few names later. But he chose a Roman sympathizer to be amongst his disciples. And then he chose Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and then Simon the zealot. So get this. On his roster of disciples, Jesus saw fit to have a Roman sympathizer who cheated his own family and friends out of money and then sent it on to Rome. Very popular. And he had a guy who so hated Rome, this occupying force, that he was one of these who believed that someday you're going to have to do whatever it took, even if it meant taking up a sword. So he had these two guys on the same team. So either Jesus was clueless <laughs> about the makeup of his own board, or we are when we don't recognize the genius of the makeup of his own cast of characters. So what we have in this makeup of disciples is not just something that is odd for oddness sake. It's a message. It's an insight. It's Christ saying, here's how we will move forward. But the zealot over here seems like he's always carrying a weapon. And a tax collector over here who's cheated all of us before. This is how the body of Christ should move as well. I'm going to leave you in your seats to pray today. Because I want you to have some time to reflect. Because I want to ask you this question. Are you prepared to move forward like this? Because listen to the risks that there are in this. I think we're asked as the body of Christ to take up similar risks that we see Jesus taking. Don't you think it was a risk to have on your staff both a sympathizer with the enemy and a revolutionary? Are we willing to be those people?